So I run a website called Saffron and for a while I was using a service worker with it. But I was running into some real problems with whenever I wanted to push an update or make an update to the website, the users would be getting that update really slowly. Um, and so in this video I'm going to talk about why I decided to just totally remove the service worker from this website uh, to fix that problem. Now if you don't even know what a service worker is, um, it's something that just runs in the background of your website and can add some additional functionality. One of those things is caching static files, which can be great for if you want your website to work offline, which mine I didn't care about that at all. But if you cache static files, um, the next time the user reloads your page or it comes to your website again, it's going to load faster for them. Now, originally when I was using this website, I didn't actually, or building this website, I didn't even realize I had a service worker uh, installed on it. I was using Create React App to actually build the site, and it actually includes a service worker for you. Now, the newest version of this actually makes it opt-in, so you don't get it by default, but the earlier version just came with it. And so whenever I publish the site, I don't even know if I realized I had a service worker actually running in the background. Um, but once I realized that the service worker actually was caching static files, I went ahead and just kept it in there because I was like, why not? That sounds great. I want my site to load faster. Um, sign me up. So I just kept it in there and it was, it was running for a while with it. But what I didn't realize is there's some drawbacks to using a service worker and just caching the files. And so that's what we're going to take a look at now. So this is what it would look like when someone would visit my website for the first time. So they'd go to my website and then it would go to Netlify. This is where my static files are hosted. So I'm talking about my JavaScript, my HTML, my CSS, my images, all that stuff is on Netlify. And so it'd get the static files from there and it would serve the content. Now what the service worker is going to do is these static files, it's going to cache them. And so next time the user visits your site, it's going to look something like this. They visit the website and it's just going to serve them the cached files it doesn't have to go to Netlify to get them. And so this is how it would work, for example, in an offline example, is you don't even have to make a request to get anything, it just serves the content. And these cache files are stored uh, in your browser, or at least somewhere on your computer. Now, assuming you have a connection, uh, what's gonna happen is something like this. So this is what the case looks like if you're not offline and this is what would happen most of the time for my website because I wasn't expecting anyone to use it without an internet connection. So they'd go to our website, they'd receive the cache files and they'd see the website quicker and be able to use it quicker. And so they can just go around using the website as they normally would. They can check recipes and yada yada yada. Now what's going to happen is in the background the service worker is going to send a request to Netlify and check whether there's new content or a new uh, update that I've pushed and that I'm ready to uh, for everyone to get and to start using. And what's going to happen is every time I want to make an update to my website, I believe a new service worker has to be installed. And so it looks something like uh, this. Whenever we actually check for the update, if it's available, it's going to download the new files and the new files are going to sit in this area, you know, right next to your website in this kind of like waiting state is what I like to think of it as. And I actually think that's the term they use uh, for service workers. And basically it's just sitting here in this waiting zone until it's ready to make a swap. So the question is, when should the new files or the new service worker be swapped in for the uh, old content or the cache files in the current service worker? When should that swap happen? Well, you may be thinking, well, when the user refreshes the page, they should be seeing the latest content, right? Well, it turns out with service workers, the default behavior is, not, it doesn't work like that. If you were to refresh the page, you'd actually just get the cached files again, and the new files would just be sitting there. All right, so it looks exactly like this. You refre refresh the page and everything's exactly the same. The new files are just sitting over here waiting and your new service worker hasn't taken over. In this particular case, the way you would actually get the user to get the new files in the new service worker is to actually close the tab and then reopen and revisit your website. And there are some other conditions 
that the service worker will actually make the swap and get the new service worker and new files in. Uh, but that's one of the cases. Now you may be thinking that is pretty bad and you want the user to get new stuff when they refresh the page. And there actually is a way to get that working and it's called skip waiting. So this is a function that you can call on the service worker uh, and now your new files are basically ready and the service worker is ready to go in whenever it is downloaded in the background. And so when you refresh the page, you're gonna get the new content. Um, and so this is in theory uh, pretty good because it, it introduces a N plus one delay, um, but the users should be getting the site pretty quickly. So what I mean by an N plus one delay is I visit your website and it's gonna have the old version of the site but then when I refresh the page, I now have the new version. And so that's gonna happen every time I make an update. The user is just behind by one. Now this was not a problem for me whenever I was using the site, because I would just see, all right, I'm using the old version, I'd refresh and I'd get the new one. Um, and in theory, this doesn't sound too bad. Like an N plus one delay doesn't sound too bad if the user's just behind by one refresh. All they have to do is refresh to get the new version. But for whatever reason, in practice, users are not getting the newest version of the website. I don't know what was happening with it, um, but I would get error reports from the a site or a code that I wrote a month ago, and a new version, like several new versions have been out, and that user is still on a really old version. And so I would just question, are they not closing? They have an old tab open or something? Um, even that shouldn't be causing this sort of like delay in them getting an update. I had no idea why users were still really slow to update. And so this was like causing a problem. I'd want to announce a feature um, and then people would go to the site and be like, I don't see the feature there, what's going on? And I'd be like, oh crap, they don't have the latest update. Why is this happening? And so it just was like causing some frustration and some just problems overall with users not having the latest content. Now there are some things you can do that make this better or that you can improve this a little bit. And no matter if you're using skip waiting or you're not using it, one thing you can do is you can watch for when the uh, update in the background happens and the new files have been loaded in. So the content has been cached, the server's worker's ready to go. Um, you can actually listen to this in your React or JavaScript code and what you can do is you can show a little notification to the user like, hey, this website has a new version available. Would you like to get it? Um, and so this is what it looks like for uh, Inbox. So this is a new version of Inbox is available. And then you can click to refresh on this little uh, pop-up that comes up in the corner. Um, this helped a little bit, but I was still, it was, I tried doing something similar, but it was one of those things where it was such a small alert not too many people were clicking on it. So I was like, let's try something a little bit more prominent. So I'd actually just like grab a modal and stick it over the top of their screen and be like, hey, a new version is available, refresh your page, right? To get them to get the new content right away. But that was a pretty crappy user experience. And it was one of those things where every time I'd do an update, they just come to the website and then it asked them to refresh right away, um, which was kind of like awkward. And so I realized the behavior I wanted was just the default behavior without a service worker. I wanted whenever the user came to my website, they got the latest version of it. And so because of that, I just decided to remove the service worker altogether. I was spending a lot of time researching how they worked and trying these mitigation tactics and things to like make the updating faster and happen more often and all that stuff. And I was like, at the end of the day, not worth it. Any kind of performance gain I was getting from the user coming into the site again and it, you know loading faster was not worth it. I went ahead and just removed it, and uh, I've been really happy about it ever since. People have been getting the newest version like they should be a lot faster. Um, now, the one other thing that I wanted to mention, because uh, this was always in the back of my mind. So whenever I was making configuration changes to the service worker, I was really cautious not to ship or make a change that would create a bad service worker. So there's a way to ship bad service workers that just basically ruin the site and no one can get an update to the website unless they clear their cache or use a different browser, um, which is pretty pretty bad. 
And so this is something I actually remember seeing with Kent Dodds. So he released a website called testingjavascript.com and people were seeing uh, this when they came to the website. And it turns out that they had shipped a bad service worker. Um, I don't know if this being shown was because of the bad service worker, um, but at this point, it was very hard for them to then update the site and people with the bad service worker to be able to get the new, um, the change they made to fix this. Uh, and you can see that they said, in the meantime, try clearing the site data in your browser or using another browser, right? And so it's very hard once you ship a bad service worker to fix it and uh, get your users uh, with a good service worker again. And so luckily his users were technical in nature and so they, they'll know how to clear their site data or just use another browser, that's all good. Uh, but if your users aren't and uh, this is just like a major, major problem that you could run into and that could be really painful to try to fix. And so this was another reason why I was just like, you know what, I'm not sure I want to be working so much with service workers and doing all these changes because I don't want to break it. And so for that reason, just, just cut it off all together. And I just plan on probably not using service workers for future websites that don't need offline capabilities or any of the other features that service workers add. Now, I think it's going to be a necessary evil if you need some of those things. Um, like if you want your content cached or if you want to be able to make a But if I'm not working on a site that needs those things, uh, I'm not going to be adding it uh, in the future.